This is an example of a drip irrigation system for papaya, located at the Tropical Research and Education Center in Homestead, Florida. Drip irrigation was selected for papaya because it allows for fertigation, which is the process where nutrients are included during irrigation and thereby reduces labor requirements for this crop. Drip irrigation is a very efficient way to irrigate as water is slowly applied directly to the soil, allowing for infiltration with minimal water losses to evaporation or runoff. Drip irrigation systems are often used in vegetable plantings, bananas, and papaya fields in South Florida. Let's move through the steps of the process. Groundwater is the irrigation water source for this drip irrigation system. At this pumping station, a submersible pump is located at the appropriate depth inside the galvanized wellhead pipe. The system is operated under pressure such that when a solenoid valve opens and pressure drops below a set point in the irrigation line, the pump starts to maintain a constant pressure in the line. The filter removes debris from the water which protects the irrigation valves and helps to minimize clogging of emitters. Filters must be cleaned regularly to maintain high performance of the system. Depending on the source of water and its quality, a proper cleaning schedule can be developed. Checking the filter periodically will help to develop an effective filter cleaning schedule. The check valve prevents water from flowing back into the well. With the check valve, water can only flow in one direction. When installing a check valve in an irrigation system, they typically have an arrow that will indicate which direction water should flow. It is important to check for this before installing to ensure not having to repeat the install process. Check valves or some other backflow prevent device should be on all irrigation systems. Pressure gauges are used to determine the pressure in the line. Checking a gauge can tell you if the system is operating as expected. A pressure gauge should always be placed on the pressurized side of an irrigation system. Other gauges may be added as needed. Pressure relief valves protect the system against pressure spikes. If pressure reaches a set level which is determined as detrimental to the system, the excess pressure is released through the valve. Pressure regulators protect irrigation components from high pressure by reducing the pressure to a set pressure point. Pressure regulators are typically used on drip systems. The pressure tank helps to maintain a pressurized irrigation system. They are common in drip and micro sprinkler systems. They are also used in home systems that have their own groundwater well. The fertilizer container stores the liquid fertilizer before it is used. The mixing tank mixes the water and fertilizer for better distribution. The injector injects fertilizer into the irrigation water for fertigation of plants. This injector is triggered by the irrigation controller to add fertilizer into the line. The solenoid valve is an electronic valve that typically is wired to an irrigation automatic controller. The controller sends an electronic signal to open the valve, which allows irrigation to occur. Solenoid valves also come with a direction arrow that should be used to show direction of water flow. Water meters monitor the volume of water passing through a line. Water meters are good tools for determining if there is a problem in the irrigation system or if irrigation is occurring as anticipated. There are many different types of irrigation controllers. This controller allows the user to input different programs and different stations. This controller also allows two programs to operate at one time, which is essential if a solenoid-operated injector is used for fertigation. The blue tubing is lay-flat, and when water drains from the tube, it lays flat. This type of tubing is convenient as it is lightweight, can be driven over by a vehicle when water has drained, and is easy to use with drip tape. 
Drip tape is connected using plastic fittings to the lay flat. Emitters within the drip tape are spaced evenly. If pressure exceeds drip tape limits, drip tape can be blown off lines. Here you can see the tape being blown off and repaired. Pressure regulators should be used with drip tape to prevent such incidents. The plastic mulch is laid over the drip tape to help secure the drip lines and to help reduce weeds. Drip lines can be moved off the plant and into the row by wind. To keep plastic mulch from ripping or getting holes, try not to walk on the mulch. If rips are large, they can be repaired with tape. It takes some time to fill drip systems when irrigation begins. The actual time of irrigation is not the time the system is on, but rather the time the system is fully pressurized to the last line of the drip tape.